Hey guys, thanks for checking this out. Today we're gonna look into something a little different and that is the world of plant tissue culturing. Now, I know that might sound a little scary and to be honest, it is a little bit scary. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. But the main idea is that you can take a cutting of a plant, put it in the right growth media, control the lighting, control the temperature, and over time you can multiply that one cutting into many exact copies of the original plant. And uh, this is commonly used on the industrial scale for uh, tomatoes specifically, I, but I know there's quite a few different other plants that, uh, that are commonly cloned. Uh, I wanna try it on the small scale using easy to build equipment and uh, do it at home, mostly just for fun for myself. As you can see, I have no shortage of plants to choose from. Uh, I'm in the Pacific Northwest, Evergreen State, so we got, to, we got plenty of things, uh, uh, plenty of plants to choose from. But uh, like I said, there's a lot going on to make this actually work. So uh, first off, we need to have a temperature controlled environment. We need to have a light controlled environment uh, so we can adjust the photo period. Uh, we need to have it as sterile as possible. And we need to select the right growth hormones for, to make the plant media, uh, the, the media that actually makes the, the plant multiply. So a lot of things that can go wrong. I'm really looking forward to diving right in. So this first video is going to be all about uh, building the enclosure. So we have to control the temperature and the lights and I'm gonna go ahead and automate all of that. And uh, I'm also gonna connect it up to Wi-Fi so I can see and monitor the plants live wherever I'm at in the world, keep an eye on the temperature, things like that. For now, let's get into building a pretty cool uh, growing chamber, uh, fully automated. I can't wait to do it. Let's go. Okay, here is the environmentally controlled uh, tissue culture growing box, I guess is what you could call it. Uh, it's all automated, but uh, I'll, so I'll give you a quick overview of each of the main components, and then, uh, uh, then I'll crack the hood here, and I'll show you the brains behind the whole operation. So uh, as you can already see, I already have the tissue cultures uh, in the tubes and in the growth medium. I'll be covering all that in the second video, how I did that and, and the process there. Uh, but now I'm just talking about the box and the automation behind it that, to, that hopefully will make this experiment work. We'll see. So, uh, so for starters, probably the most noticeable thing is the light. I actually have two, uh, two sockets for light bulbs. Uh, that is a 100 watt, uh, 6,500 6, K uh, bulb, fluorescent bulb. And I had two in there. Uh, but that was a bit overkill. It was overheating the box. So I took one out and 100 watts is still plenty for this size. Really, I only need 80. So, so that's just fine. And that's all controlled up here uh, with the, the electronics. And uh, up here in the corner, that is our cooling fan and our heating fan all in one. So uh, I have uh, one part of the controller that, uh, that turns on the heater, another part that turns on the fan itself. And that fan is controlled by these two sets of wires down here, right there. And right there, that is, a, I'm calling it temperature sensor one. That's actually temperature and humidity sensor. And then the one over there is a different type of sensor, still uh, temperature though. Uh, it just has a different sensing element. So I have a little bit of redundancy built in so I don't accidentally fry one location in my, uh, my growth chamber. Uh, then up here, with this tiny, tiny LCD. And uh, this is still a work in progress, but you can see temperature one is 25 degrees, temperature two, 26.5, and then I have humidity is 49%. Uh, top right is just the time of day. So I'm shooting this at uh, what, 9.48 in the evening. And then I still haven't adjusted the, the text down below at hold. That uh, is just going to tell me what, uh, what state the whole um, control system is in. So if it's supposed to be heating or cooling or just holding the temperature. So uh, now I'll crack the hood open and I'll show you all the specifics uh, inside. Okay, here's the brains behind everything. Uh, this is what's making everything actually tick. I will start off with the most basic components and then I will get into the, the details of what, uh, what, what's going on up here. Uh, before I get in too deep, I want to mention all of these components are modular, so I can take this whole unit off and put that into a different box or um, maybe a greenhouse or really anything I want to control 
uh, without having to rewire all the sensitive stuff. And that's why I have this big ball of wires here. Uh, everything is detachable, the power is detachable, the control cable is detachable. So, so that's why it looks like it might be a bit messy, but that was all done on purpose to give me some extra slack and if I wanna use this in a different project later on. So let's get into it. Uh, this is the DC power supply that uh, provides 24 volts, uh, 10 amp DC current. And I know that sounds like a lot, but that heater down there is very power hungry. So uh, need, we need to have a hefty heater for it, or a hefty power supply for it. <clears throat> and then uh, see back here, we have three wires coming out of this box. We have uh, the main power wire, we have the lights wire, uh, lights power. So that's a whole different circuit. Because um, I wasn't sure how much current those lights would draw. It was just safer to keep it on a separate circuit. And then uh, I have my USB programming cable. And that way I can program on the fly without having to open this thing up. Uh, up there, I have the little LCD screen you saw previously. And uh, let's get into the goodies here. What's, what's going on this big red board? So at the heart of this whole thing is an Arduino Nano. And that's what's providing the, uh, the logic control, the sensor reading, all that. This is the gem of, uh, um, of this whole setup, at the heart of everything really. And uh, it's detachable, so if something goes wrong and I fry it, I can pop it out. That was done on purpose. Ask how I know how to do that. <laughs> or why I do that, I mean. Uh, I've ruined up a few of those in my time. Uh, next we have the power regulators. I have a five volt and a 12 volt. And the 12 volt uh, powers the fan. The five volt powers everything else. So uh, uh, the Arduino can't power everything. There's just too much going on here for it to power five volts on its own. So this provides power to everything else. Over here, I have the Wi-Fi module, and that's a serial module. So the Arduino outputs a serial, um, a serial data, and then this will read the data and then upload it to a cloud server. And uh, I think I'm using ThingSpeak is the, the cloud server I'm sending to. And every once in a while, you might see those lights flash, and that's whenever the Wi-Fi is being updated. Uh, some people might ask if they're into this kind of thing, why I'm not just using like a Node MCU or an Arduino with a Wi-Fi board already on it. Uh, believe me, I wish I would have in hindsight. Um, I did not add the Wi-Fi until the very end. So looking back, if I was to do this again, I would definitely just use a Node MCU, something like that. Uh, it, would made, it would have made things much simpler. Oh, well, hindsight 2020, now I have redundancy if one of them goes down. That'll help me know if something goes wrong. Uh, over here, I have the real-time clock, and you can see there's a battery on that. And the idea with that is if power, uh, if it gets unplugged or something happens that makes all this shut down, power goes out, I don't lose my timing. So uh, that has, a, that will save my time of day and I can plug it back in and it will start right up no matter where it's at. And then over here, these are the switches, they're the relays. And uh, um, this, uh, the, this Arduino board controls each of these switches. So whenever it senses that the fan needs to turn on, it clicks the fan on. Same thing with the heater here and the lights. And I'll show you a demo of that in just a minute. Okay, I have the Arduino running a demo program now. Oh, there we go. The lights just turned on and you might've saw that relay. Click on and off, watch for the red lights at the top screen, the top of the screen. And uh, I manually set the temperature to a lower number. So the controller board thinks that it needs to be heating right now. So what it's going to do is it keep the fan on all the time. Then it's gonna turn the heater on and off in 10 second intervals. And the reason I have that is so uh, hot spots don't form inside the chamber and uh, it'll heat up for 10 seconds and then it will allow the fan to mix the, the hot air. Uh, I found hot spots were forming if I just left the heater on all the time um, when I needed to warm up and it got, my, my overshoot was too much so I was, uh, getting too hot too fast. So this, uh, this allows much finer control uh, with the, just this on and off setup I have. And you can see the heater just turned on again. And uh, you can actually see the fan, I kind of. Fan is on and the heater is on as well. And it'll turn on and off, or the, the heater will turn on and off. You don't notice the heater turning on and off. Um, just the fan stays on. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. It's really fairly simple. Uh, uh, the Wi-Fi does get updated every 10, uh, 20 seconds. So I think that's the maximum that uh, ThinkSpeak allows. So 
uh, I don't I don't need much finer data than that anyway. So every 10 seconds that will upload to the cloud and I will be able to check it on my phone. And that is it for the electronics. Hope you found that interesting. In the next video, I'll be going over the code that makes all those cool electronics work. So uh, um, it's really the black magic that, uh, that really breathes life into all the electronics. I love coding, it's something I, I've always really enjoyed. Uh, if you don't love coding, it might be something you're not used to, maybe something uh, that you haven't seen before. So hopefully you'll find it interesting and I'll see you next time.